हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द लेक्चर ऑन प्री वाइब्रेशन विच इज यूनिट नंबर टू एंड विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ कोर्स ऑन मैकेनिकल वाइब्रेशन एंड द लेसन नंबर वन डील्स विद द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ फ्री वाइब्रेशन सो फ्री वाइब्रेशन आर नथिंग बट वेर इन अ फोर्स इज अप्लाइड ऑन टू द सिस्टम एंड द फोर्स इज रिलीव्ड then the system is going to vibrate on its own so in this we can have the classification as undamped vibrations or damped vibrations so first of all we'll see what is pre undamped vibrations so undamped vibration is nothing but there is no decay of vibration amplitude that means the complete conversion of potential energy complete conversion of potential energy to the kinetic energy and the vice versa will be possible so there is no loss of energy that means there is no loss of amplitude of vibration in that specifically we'll be discussing about single degrees of freedom system so in this there are some assumptions that mass to be treated as rigid and it is lumped at a particle then the elasticity of the material with which the component has been made is idealized by a single spring and as it is a single degree of freedom system it will have only one natural frequency so as you can see in the figure you can see a mass m which is lumped and there is a spring which is connected to it one end of the spring is connected to the fixed frame and the other end of the spring is connected to the mass now we have to derive the equation of motion that the forces or torques which are causing the motion so for linear displacement we are interested in only the forces wherein for angular motion we are interested in the torques so there are different ways with which we can derive the equation of motion first and the first first and the furthermost furthermost used way of deriving the equation of motion is nothing but newton's second law of motion then the second one is d alembert's principle third is the principle of virtual displacement and the last one is the principle of conservation of energy now out of which the first two are very much important and that's why we are going to use it and all these two ways of deriving the equation of motion are applicable to any class of vibration so we'll be studying that in depth so in the figure you can see we have drawn the free body diagram for that mass so we are having mass m so it the weight of the body is going to act downward so there will be a normal reaction as per the newton's third law there will be equal and opposite reaction coming and the spring which is attached to the mass will not allow that mass to move towards right through a displacement of x so the force offered by the spring that is the resisting force offered by the spring is given by k into x where k is the stiffness of the spring and x is the displacement through which mass has been pulled now we can use the newton second law of motion to develop the equation of motion so what is the procedure to derive the equation of motion first you have to select suitable coordinates then you have to establish a static equilibrium position then you have to draw free body diagram for the lumped mass and once you have drawn the free body diagram you have to apply newton second law of motion so to summarize the rate of change of momentum is equal to applied force is the law of newton so for the 
body of spring mass system, we can apply the Newton's law wherein we can write down the equation as f is equal to m a. So, f is a function of time which can be written as d by d t into bracket m into d x upon d t. Now, m is constant we can take it outside and we can write down m into d square x t by d t square. So, the same thing we can write down it as m x double dot. So, this is applicable for linear motion. If we have a rotational motion, it will be written as moment of t is equal to j into theta double dot, where j is the polar moment of inertia and theta double dot is the angular acceleration. If we have an undamped single degree of freedom system, then a force will be written as minus k x is equal to m x double dot, because the spring force is in a reverse direction to that of your applied force, that is why minus sign is there. If we do the mathematical reformulation, the equation comes as m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0 and this is nothing but the equation of motion for the spring mass system. Now, we have to assume some solution. So, most of the times the natural phenomena which are happening will be treated to be happening with the simple harmonic motion. A simple harmonic motion is a subset of periodic motion. So, for that the typical equation of motion for the solution of SHM is given as x of t is equal to a cos omega n t plus b sin omega n t or in the complementary form of it, we can write down x of t is equal to a e raise to i omega n t plus b e raise to minus i omega n t. Alternatively, we can write down s is equal to plus minus i into omega n. So, x of t becomes c into e raise to plus minus s t. We can substitute the value of x of t into the earlier equation of motion and we can get c is equal to m s square plus k is equal to 0. In this equation, your constant c can be equal to 0, that is why your m s square plus k should be equal to 0 and if we solve this algebraic equation, we get s is equal to plus minus i omega n or it can be written as plus minus under root of k by m, which are nothing but the roots or eigenvalues of the equation. So, from this, we can get the natural frequency of the system. Now, to get those characteristics constants, what we have to do is, we have to apply boundary conditions. So, a typical boundary condition wherein the displacement at time t is equal to 0 is treated as x 0. So, the amplitude of the equation a is equal to x 0. Similarly, x dot that is the velocity at time t is equal to 0 is treated as b into omega n which will be written as x dot 0. If we put those values into the earlier solution, we can get x of t is equal to x 0 cos omega n t plus x dot 0 omega by omega n into sin of omega n t. If we solve that, we get the final equation as x of t is equal to a 0 into sin of omega n t plus phi. Now, we can describe the motion of harmonic oscillator based upon symmetry, symmetricity about the equilibrium position. Then, through the equilibrium velocity is maximum and the acceleration is 0, whereas at the peaks and the valleys, the velocity is 0 and acceleration is maximum. And the natural frequency is written as omega n is equal to under root of k by m is nothing but the natural frequency of the single degree of freedom system, wherein we are only concentrating upon free undamped vibrations. And if we do the same spring mass system vertically, the natural frequency can be written as omega n is equal to under root of k by m, wherein k can be written as mg by delta st. We can rewrite the system equation as omega n is equal to under root of g by delta s t and if you want frequency in hertz, f n will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of g by 
डेल्टा एस टी